Okay, g'day all, and uh, welcome to another little um, music theory adventure. Uh, today we're going to be talking about time signatures, and in particular I want to talk about simple versus compound time signatures. So simple versus compound. Uh, so almost all of Western music, that's all of your classical Western music, all of your rock music, jazz, anything Western is um, pretty much written in one of two families of time signatures. You've got simple time signatures and compound time signatures. And it's a point of confusion, but this is what they mean. This is what they mean. Um, simple time signatures, the beat is divisible by two. Divisible by two. And in compound time signatures, the beat is divisible by three. Uh, beat is div by three. Three. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, it's not very difficult, uh, but it is a point of confusion. So we'll go through a few examples and we'll have a look at exactly what that means to divide the beat by two or three. Um, if you're not sure what a beat is, just have a look at Wikipedia or something. I'm sure there's, you know, a lot of different places that can explain what a beat is. But I personally would probably say that the beat is, is just the pulse of the song. You know, it's what you count. So you might count along with a song. You might go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, what you're counting there is the beat. Uh, anyway, a simple time signature, the beat is divisible by two. So let's have a bit of a look at an example of a simple time signature. Because I think the best way to learn these uh, is to have a look at examples. I call myself a treble clef for no reason at all. Uh, two, four will be my simple time signature. So two, four is actually simple um, duple. And 2-4 means that there's two crotchet beats per bar. So I could put a crotchet beat there, I could put a crotchet beat there, but then I would have to put a bar line. Nothing else would fit in that bar. I couldn't put a quaver. It doesn't fit. Um, okay, so that's two beats. We've got one there, and we've got the second beat just there. Uh, or if I wanted, in a bar of 2-4, and this is where things get a bit tricky, I could put um, quavers. Yeah, or eighth notes, if you um, like. Yeah, something like that. So four quavers fits in the same amount of time as two crotchets. So we could easily put four quavers in a bar of two, four. But notice how I've beamed them together. Yeah, so I've beamed them in groups of two. And what we've got here is um, that's the first beat just there on that quaver. And the second beat falls here on the um, first quaver of the second group. Just like that. Uh, that's the second beat. So you might, if you're counting along in quavers to a bar of 2-4, you might say 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and... Yeah, something like that. So 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and... That's your um, basic 2-4 beat. Um, but what you gotta, what you got to kind of look out for is the fact that what I've done here is divided the beat into quavers but in so doing, it's become two quavers, just like that. So, yeah, the beat was um, crotchets. Crotchets divide into two quavers. So 2-4 is a simple um, time signature, basically. Yeah, that's pretty much all it comes down to. So let's have a look at a counter example. Let's have a look at a compound time signature. 2-4 uh, is called simple duple. Uh, let's have a look at compound duple. There we go, 6-8, and this is where things start to get a bit weird. This is where things start to get a little bit unmathematical. I mean, you can you can try and apply some sort of mathematical or scientific reasoning to, what, to the way that we um, write time signatures in music, but in the end, music's not maths. <laughs> we do things like this just because we do. I'm sure there's a historical reason for it, but yeah, you just got to learn it in the end. Anyway, 6-8... Um, is compound duple, and this is what trips people up. People get into the habit of um, saying that this top number just here of the time signature is the number of beats, but it's not. It's not the number of beats in a compound time signature. There's not six beats in 6-8. Um, There's two beats. Let's have a bit of a look. Okay, and they're actually um, dotted. Yeah, dotted crotchets. There we go. So that's a bar of 6-8. There's one beat there, and the second beat is there. But the beats are dotted. And that's the important thing. So 6-8 doesn't mean there's six beats in a bar. It means there's two beats in a bar. Um, but the interesting thing is, if we write out this bar of 6-8 just here as um, quavers, well, there's six quavers in the bar. 6-8 means six quavers fits in the bar. 
Uh, but what you do when you're writing in 6, 8, because it's compound, uh, you group your quavers in threes. Just like that. Pretending that that line was... Hold on. I'll draw it a bit neater. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's the first beat just there. There's the second beat just there. Um, they're dotted crotchets, and three quavers fit in a dotted crotchet. So what you might want to do, if you're counting in uh, a compound time signature, instead of going like one and two, and like you did with a simple time signature, you want to go one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and... Uh, you see, you put in an extra ah uh in there, so one and ah. Uh, uh, two and ah. Uh. And that is um, pretty much all that's meant by um, compound. Yeah, so instead of dividing the beat into two, they're dotted, so you can divide it into three, just like that. Basically, all the um, difference between simple and compound is. That's all it comes down to. Um, but what people find confusing is that that top number no longer means the number of beats. Uh, you'll see many different places on YouTube and the internet, a lot of people saying that that top number is the number of beats, but I tell you that they're just wrong. There's no way around it. They're wrong. There's, um, there's not 12 beats in a bar of 12.8. I kid you not, there's just not. Nobody could dance to 12.8 otherwise. Um, okay, so moving along, we've gone through simple duple, that's 2.4, and compound duple, which is 6.8. I want to talk about now 3.4. 3.4 .4. Uh, is actually called um, simple triple. And there's three crotchet beats per bar. So that would be a bar of 3.4. Uh, or you could put a minimum there and a crotchet. You know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but the important thing is what happens when we write this as quavers. So if I write a bar of 3, 4 as quavers, there's going to be 6 quavers, something like this. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So that's the important thing there, is that I grouped the six quavers in groups of two. So three, four has three beats. That's one beat there, two, and three. So your bar's going to sort of sound like one, two, three, one, two, three, doom, cha, cha. You know what? It's, um, it's the waltz time signature. Yeah, waltzes and minuets are in three, four. Uh, so if you were counting out quavers, what you'd do is you'd go one, and two, and three, and yeah, one and two and three and one and two and three and and what you'll notice is that I've divided the beat once again from crotchets into quavers exactly as we did before, um, but the beat's divided into um, two quavers, yeah, which makes it a simple time signature. And since there's three beats in the bar, it's called simple triple. Uh, what you'll also notice, and this is just a weird little coincidence, I guess, but the number of quavers in a bar of 3-4 is exactly the same as a bar of 6-8. But the feel is very different. So 3-4 sounds like 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 6-8, on the other hand, is 1 and uh, 2 and uh, 1 and uh, 2 and... Uh, so 6-8's got two beats, 3-4's got three beats, but if you get right down to it, they've got the same number of quavers. Uh, which brings up a really interesting trick called Hemiola, but we'll talk about that later, I think. Uh, anyway, that's 3-4, simple triple. Let's have a look at simple, oh, sorry, compound triple. Um, compound triple is 9-8. Yeah, 9-8 is compound triple. There's three beats in the bar, but they're dotted. Yeah, dotted crotchets. Three dotted crotchets in the bar. So 9-8, 2 and 3. Just like that. So if you weren't playing any quavers or anything, if you were just playing, you know, a bar of 9-8 and you were playing dotted crotchets, and then, you know, you later on played a bar of 3-4 and you were playing crotchets, you wouldn't actually be able to hear the difference. Uh, the difference is only uh, audible when you actually split the beat up. Anyway, if we split this beats, these three beats up in a bar of 9-8, what we get is nine quavers. We get nine quavers, but they're grouped in threes. Just like that. Okay, so it's still triple. It still sort of has, has the feel of a waltz until you split the beat up. And again, this is a compound time signature, so I wouldn't count it one and two and three and like I did with the simple time signature. Instead, I'd count one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a... 
Does that make sense? So if it's a compound time signature, you want to count one and a two and a... And if it's a simple time signature, you just leave off the a and you just count one and two and... Okay, so that's compound triple. Uh, you know it's compound, the beat's divisible by three, etc, etc, etc. Let's have a look at um, simple quadruple. So this will be the last ones that we look at. 4-4 uh, is simple quadruple. There are four beats in the bar, and the beats are crotchets. Just like that. Okay, so that's beat 1, that's beat 2, that's beat 3, beat 4. And if I was to write this as quavers, because it's a simple time signature, um, I'd maybe yeah, mix it up a bit, write an F major 7, why not? Um, I'd probably... Yeah, write them something like that, and beam the quavers together in groups of two because it's a simple time signature. And if you were counting this, you'd go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, four beats in a bar and the beats divisible by two. That's simple quadruple. And finally, the last one that I think we'll look at before we go on and have a little bit of chat about all of these collectively, uh, the last one is compound uh, quadruple, 12-8. Yeah, so 12-8 is compound quadruple. Once again, it's a compound time signature, so the top number doesn't mean the number of beats. Nope. There's actually four beats in a bar of compound quadruple. Funny that, quadruple, four beats. Uh, but because it's compound, the beats are dotted. Yeah, so that's just how we write music. It's just how we write it. Um, okay, so if you were to write a bar of 12-8 as quavers, what you'd end up with is 12 quavers. Oh, this is going to be a nice song. Yeah, you'd end up with 12 quavers, something like that. Sorry, I messed that one up. Yeah, something like that. So there's 12 quavers. Once again, it's compound, so if you were to count that out, you'd go something like 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a... And uh, back to 4-4, four, four. if you're counting out 4-4, four, four, you go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... And uh, that's basically the difference between compound and simple time signatures. And what I want to mention is just a few other little things. So basically, we've got one of each. We've got a duple, a triple, and a quadruple of each. So for simple, um, duple is 2-4. Two, uh, you also see 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, 2-2 two, two is um, simple duple time, uh, meaning that there's two minimum beats per bar. Uh, it tends to be sort of slower, more majestic sort of feel to it. And uh, the 2-4 is like a, like a polka or a march. Um, simple triple time is 3-4. You don't tend to see 3-2, but you could. I mean, in the end, you can make this stuff up. You could just say 3-64 if you wanted. It's up to you. Uh, but you tend to see, for simple triple, it's almost always 3-4. Uh, and finally, simple quadruple. Quadruple is 4-4. Four, four. And that's really, really common. Even, you know, ever since, like... Um, 1500s, that was already really, really common. Or well, maybe not 1500s, but by Mozart's time it was really common. Uh, what you sometimes see, instead of simple quadruple, instead of 4-4, four, four, you'll just see a C for the time signature to mean common time. And for this one, for this one, for 2-2, two, two, you sometimes see a C with a line through it. Yeah, that means cut common time, or 2-2. Two, two. Pretty funny. Uh, okay, so the other one was um, compound time. So for compound... Uh, for compound times with uh, with duple, uh, we got six eight. Uh, there doesn't tend to be others of these. You you, you almost always see six eight. You'll occasionally occasionally see um, sixteen down the bottom here. You might see I haven't seen six sixteen, but uh, maybe twelve sixteen. I think I've seen twelve sixteen. Um, anyway, so for compound triple, the time signature is going to be nine eight, and for compound quadruple. Uh, the time signature is going to be 12-8. Uh, so you might see a little bit of a pattern here. If the time signature's got an 8 in the bottom, it's probably going to be compound. It's probably going to be compound. 
uh, 6, 8, 9, 8, 12, 8, they're all compound. But you could, in theory, you could have 3, 8. And I, I guess that would be a fast waltz. Yeah, I wouldn't tend to call that uh, compound single. <laughs> I would tend to call that myself. This is, just, this is just me, but I would tend to call that simple triple. Um, I think basically don't write anything in 3, 8 and you should be fine. Um, you might see 3, 2 occasionally. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. And what you want to do, if you've got an 8 there in the bottom, so you're thinking that your time signature is compound, what you want to do is um, divide that top number by 3, and that'll tell you how many beats. So 6 divided by 3 gives you 2. Um, so 6, 8 is compound duple. 9 divided by 3 gives you 3. So 9, 8 is compound triple. And 12 divided by 3 gives you 4. So 12, 8 is compound quadruple. And that's pretty much all there is to... Um, simple and compound time signatures. Yeah, don't let anybody tell you that that top number there is the beat. It's not. It's not always. Uh, it is the beats. It's the number of beats in a simple time signature, but not in a compound time signature. Yeah. And after these time signatures, we get all sorts of you know crazy things. And um, the composer probably would specify um, exactly what he means with a little bit of a um, little bit of clarity if he wants you to use any time signature that's not one of these. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching all. See you later.